Hi, I'm Tam with the Scove with your solar storm forecast for the week of June 20th. The sun's activity has really picked up this week. It's been firing multiple solar storms. We'll start with this prominence eruption off of the east limb, which pretty much set the stage for region 2371's entrance. It entered off the east limb, firing flares and solar storms, some of them Earth-directed, some of them not, and I'll get back to that in a second. Meanwhile, we had a beautiful uh, West Limb prominence eruption, you can see it right here, that happened so quickly that it actually launched a proton radiation storm at Earth. Then back to 2371, we get this huge 3.2 uh, M-class flare that fired a partly Earth-directed solar storm, and then right after that, it made this region unstable right here, and it let go. So now we have two Earth-directed solar storms that are coming at us that should be hitting later in the week. Switching to our M-flare threat meter, you can see before about the 18th, we actually had been pretty quiet. We'd popped over the M-flare threat level a couple of times, but since about the 18th, we had multiple active regions flaring almost simultaneously, and that popped us up over the M-flare threat level a couple times, plus that big 3.2 M-flare, and since then there's been a one, an M1 flare that is continuing to keep us on our toes. Switching to our solar storm conditions, you do recall we had a very nice solar storm back on the 8th and 9th, but things began to kind of calm down just a little bit and kept us at unsettled conditions because we had multiple high-speed streams that passed through. We also had a little another transient disturbance about at the 14th that gave us yet some more aurora, kind of nice down to almost mid-latitudes. And since then, we've pretty much started calming down as that fast stream wanes, and now it's pretty much the calm before the storm because we do have those two incoming solar storms uh, for later this week. Now, with that West Limb prominence eruption we had back on the 18th, it did launch a solar radiation storm. That storm has risen up past the S1 threat level, but it's beginning to die down now. Now, it's impacted GPS operations and amateur band or amateur radio operations, especially at high latitudes, but we should see things begin to calm down uh, within the next 24 to 48 hours. So what else does the sun have in store for us this week? Well, I'm switching back to that M2.4 flare, which launched the first of two solar storms that's Earth-directed. And you can see the gorgeous coronal loops that are being uh, ejected towards Earth in that difference image. When we switch to the coronagraphs, you can see this huge halo eruption that is ejected towards Earth. You can tell it's a full halo because of that green ring that is uh, completely surrounding the sun. So what that means is that this is likely very Earth-directed and won't be a grazing blood. Uh, blow despite what the models say. Switching to our prediction model, Enlil, this is NOAA's version of the model. The top panel's density, the bottom panel's velocity. You can see that first solar storm being launched somewhat to the east of us, and it should give us a grazing passage. And then the second solar storm is launched, and it looks like it's going westward of Earth. But I think that first solar storm definitely is going to hit us on the 22nd into the 23rd, and right after that we're going to have the other solar storm smack into us. And this should give us like a one-two punch coming in from the 22nd, maybe clear through the 24th. Returning to the disk, you can see region 2365 has now rotated off of the west limb, but that still leaves major players 2367 and 2371 in play. So that means NOAA is going to keep our M-flare risks elevated easily throughout this week, and that gives a, a chance for radio blackouts with these M-class flares um, for you amateur radio operators that will just kind of black out the bands and also for you GPS users. Now, as region 2367 rotates off onto the west limb, we might see an increased risk uh, for more particle radiation storms, but that won't be for a few days yet. Also, we have a, a new region that will be rotating into view off of the southeast limb probably within the next three or four days. It's hard to tell without our backside monitor, but we can already see the glow from that region as it's rotating uh, closer to view. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are in the quiet before the storm, so to speak, because we are expecting those two solar storms to hit us starting around the 22nd. And at high latitudes, NOAA has given us about a 65% chance uh, for a major storm on the 22nd and in through the 23rd and 24th. At mid-latitudes, we're expecting only about minor storm possibilities, but these, the storming should continue through the 24th before it begins to quiet down. So this should give us a really good chance for some aurora, but expect that the amateur radio bands uh, probably won't do so well over those few days. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, we do have two uh, M-flare contenders on the Earth-facing disk right now, so NOAA is keeping our M-flare risk very high at 70% and our X-flare risk at 15%, and that will continue probably throughout the week uh, while these players are still in view. 
Regarding particle radiation storms, we are in elevated levels right now. We've just dropped below the S1 threat level, and we are still have a, a risk for a new particle radiation storm that's about 40% right now. And as Region 2367 rotates to the west limb, we might see that risk rise a little, uh, even above uh, 40%. So this week has gotten very exciting very fast. We have two solar storms that are on their way that look to be impacting right about the 22nd into the 24th. So you Aurora photographers, get your cameras out and get ready because we might have some really good Aurora possibilities, especially if these storms hit a bit faster than predicted. But of course, this is bad news for you amateur radio operators and GPS operators who are already having to deal with uh, M-flare blackouts, radio blackouts, and uh, the issues with the proton radiation storm that's hitting right now that's dying off and this is just going to add insult to injury. Speaking of that radiation storm, it is dying down and that's a good thing uh, especially for you international flyers uh, who have to fly over the poles because you're getting higher doses of radiation right now. It's not a really big deal but if you happen to be a high risk passenger uh, or pregnant uh, you might want to factor these uh, risks into your flight plans. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.